Good evening, this is Bell Geode, and we are back with some more X-Plane 10.50. So we are here in Findlayville Airport. I'm sure you remember this airport that I created uh, several weeks ago, probably about a month ago now. And we are in Dreamfoil's AS350 Hilo. And I want to give a special thanks to uh, Heli Simmer. Thank you so much. Really appreciate that. All right. So what I want to do tonight, I wanted to get back into the Hilo action here and show you a couple of the little airports that I've been working on. Now, these are grass strips, so don't expect uh, there to be a whole heck of a lot of scenery. However, there should be just enough to give you an idea of what you can do with some of the smaller airports if you should decide to use um, WED, the world editor that comes with X-Plane. All right. But... Before we can do any of that, we got to start this sucker up. So let's hop in ye old belly copter here, and let's get the show on the road. All right, so we are inside. This thing is really, really high tech. Take a quick look around here. Wow. So you've got uh, seating for a total of six people, including pilot and co-pilot. We've got the traditional Dreamfoil headset here, which we'll go ahead and put that on our head. It doesn't move like the one in the uh, 300 CBI, but I think this one was created prior to that. So that's probably the reason why that is the case. All right, but we got our rotor brake, which is on. We got our fuel, which is on. Um, goes either way. The brake is on so the rotors can't move, but the fuel is on, which means the engine can start. And I do have the checklist pulled up on computer screen number two, so I'm going to pop that up real quick here. All right, so the AS350. I absolutely love Dreamfoil Creations work, and this one I believe they had help with uh, Nemeth Designs, which should be a familiar name to you FSX Hilo pilots. They've also done some pretty good craft there, which I might be showing off sometime soon in the regular FSX series that I do. All right, so I'm going to go through the startup checklist here real quick. Uh, seats and control pedals adjust and secure. We're fine there. Seat belts fasten. Rotor brake forward locked. Yes, we already confirmed. Rotor brake is forward and locked. Uh, let's see. Fuel shut off lever. Oh, wait. I wonder what they're saying with that rotor brake. Because technically that's not forward and locked. That is up or down, I guess, as the case may be. All right. This is the lock here. So we'll go ahead and click that. And we'll move that forward and lock okay so now we did it it is forward and locked all right twist grip should be in the idle position twist grip of course is on the collective and if we look really close it'll say idle if i slide it over that way that's flight so we'll put it back to idle there hydraulic pressure switch should be on that's this little guy here now it's off now it's on Okay, uh, let's see. Emergency switch. Check that it's in the up position. Yes, it most certainly is. So we'll leave that there. And uh, next thing is the starting selector should be off. Starting selector is up here. And yes, it is in the off position with the guard up. So that is good. All right. Now, next thing we need to do is we need to get some electricity going in this bird. Uh, we could pull out like a GPU or something like that. I think this thing has the option for that. Like most of the Dreamfoil aircraft, if you click right here on the dashboard, it should pop that up. And yes, as you can see, there is a toggle for the GPU. We're not going to need it because we're just going to get this thing started. So here's our main uh, console here that's got all the various buttons that operate the Hilo. So we're going to look for three buttons that we need to turn on. First is BAT EPU. And is that on? Yes, it's on. DCT BAT. There we go. We can hear everything coming to life. And GENE, -E, which I'm sure is short for generator. So we'll go ahead and turn that on. Now the next thing we want to do, lighting circuits one and two test. So we'll need to locate those buttons here. Uh, lighting circuits, instrument lights one, instrument lights two. 
So let's go right here. And let's see, instrument lights one, yes. Instrument lights two, yes. Okay, we'll leave those on because as I'm sure you've noticed, it is evening time right now here in PA. So we're probably gonna be flying into the night. Maybe not that long, because really we're not going too, too far. All right, uh, WL test. Unfortunately, I have no idea what WL test stands for, but I know that it is a test that we need to perform. This is it here. Right next to it, we've got fire test, so we'll want to do that. And then accu test, which we'll also want to do. So that's those things right there. All right, so in order to do that, let me just back up here. Okay, that definitely works. WL obviously stands for warning light. Fire test. Okay, we got all kinds of stuff on a caution panel here that just lit up that says fire, fire. So we'll go ahead and turn that off. And then the accu test. Um, not quite sure exactly what that does, but I'm sure it did what it's supposed to do, so we'll go ahead and close the cover. Okay, ICS and GPS navigation system should be on. So, uh, let's see, GPS, we have you right there. ICS, I believe, is the intercom system. So let me just turn on the avionics switch, and that actually should get everything on that we need. Oh, with the exception of this stuff down here, so we'll go ahead and click that. That's our transponder, of course, and we'll click that, and that'll be our comms. Okay, so all of that is on. Now, we need to check the caution and warning panel lights for the following lights. We'll go through and make sure they're all currently lit. We have GENE -E generator that is lit. Oh, look at this. Ross Traver's giving me weather. All right, 3011. Remember that. We're going to need to put that in. Pedo, that is on. Horn, that is on. Fuel pressure, that is on. Engine pressure, uh, MGB, I don't know what that stands for, but that's on as well. Hydraulic and twist grip. Okay, all of those are on. All of those are on. All right, control pedals, make sure they've got free travel left and right. Uh, it takes a little while. There's probably no hydraulics, duh. Okay, cyclic pitch, uh, center and locked. Yes, it is currently locked because I am moving my joystick left and right and my cyclic is staying put, which means it is currently locked. I'll show you how to unlock that in a moment. Collective pitch should also be locked, so we'll try to raise our throttle, which is our collective in a helicopter. And yes, I got no motion. It is locked. Heating and demisting off, I would assume so, because I didn't touch it. So we're good to go there. Okay, control warning plan panel check for the governor light. Um, I don't see a governor light on, so we're good to go there. Fuel pressure light should be on. A call light should be on. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go with yes on that. I don't see the A call light, so I'm not quite sure what that is. I think I might need to turn that on here. Yeah, here it is. A call, fuel pressure. Okay. And is there a governor one by chance? No, you know, I don't see a governor one, but that's all right. We're just, we'll just leave that as is. Okay, starting selector now needs to go to the on position. So we'll go back up here and we'll flick that to on. We'll close the guard in a moment after we're sure that we've got a really good engine start here. Okay, so we are starting to gain a little bit of power here. Rotor spooling up. Oh yeah, I love that sound, baby. I love that sound. Make sure my lights are all bright here. Yep, we're good to go. Okay, so we need to make sure the engine pressure, the MGBP, and the hydro all went off. If you look on this side, you'll see they all just disappeared. Pedo should be on. So yes, that is definitely on. Fuel pressure, we need to check that. So let's see what we got here. NG is rising perfectly. Engine oil pressure is looking good. Fuel flow. Whole nine yards. Everything's looking good. RPMs are a little low, but that's okay. We kind of expect that because we haven't put the throttle up to full as of yet. 
All right. Uh, the starting selector guard can now be set since we have a very good start. So, bam. And I'm going to take time out of my busy schedule to set the altimeter. It should be at 3011 is what we're hearing. So let's go down here and see if we can set that real quick. What is it right now? Wow, it is way up there. Okay, so I got to turn you down. 3011 should be right there. Nope, that's 3012 down one more notch. 3011. All right, we're good. So now that I have that set, I can turn this channel off. So let's go ahead and just switch that over there because I think that's a blank channel that I have. 120.550, so we're good. Okay. Uh, if we had an EPU or GPU, we could take care of that right now. We are fine. We don't need to worry about that. And let's see, we'll go ahead and turn the horn on. We'll get our lights going as well. We'll flash our lights, get our taxi lights, our landing lights, the whole shebang. We'll turn the pedo heater on as well, so that'll get rid of it on the uh, caution and warning panel. Oh wow, I guess that station comes in as Allegheny County, which is 3010. Well, we don't really care about that, so that's fine. What I'll do is I'll just change the... Um, settings there and then we'll switch it there so that should be a blank channel I don't think there's anything on 122.475 alright let me check my little checklist here real quick um, all the caution and warning lights should be on we do want to do some hydraulic chest testing and whatnot uh, let's see nope we're gonna pass on the hydraulics testing Okay, so at this point in time, we can start getting the throttle up. So here we go. Keep an eye on that there. Okay, so that light extinguished. That was the very last light that we needed to extinguish. We'll wait for that to come up. We're also going to want to make sure that the cyclic will move. So we're going to unlock the cyclic here. And let's confirm that that is in fact the case. Yes, we'll move it gently in either direction. Front and back, there we go. Okay, cyclic works. We will also need to check the collective. So there's a little button, you can see it all the way at the front of the collective here. That's our lock, so we'll go ahead and click that. And that should currently be unlocked. So we'll go ahead and get the collective up just a touch here. Okay, it moves. That's good. That's good. So, my friends, I think we are just about ready to fly. I'm just looking over the list here to make sure I didn't miss anything. Okay, looks like everything is good. All our warning and caution lights are off. So, yeah, I would say we are ready to go. Almost. Almost. One more thing we got to do here. We got to put in our flight plan. So we're going to go direct to the first little airport, which should be 2-2 uh, two, two Delta. So let me go ahead and punch that in. Oh, you know what? I think I need to put the K in front of it. There it is, 84, Bandel Airport. That's our first stop. So we'll go ahead and enter that and activate it. Need to be at a heading of 218 in order to get there. Let's put it to the map and see what that looks like. So there we go. We're going due southwest, 218. All right, let's set that up on our little navigation, our HSI here, 218.
All right, I think that should be 220 right there, so we'll do a couple more notches that way. And we'll set up our heading bug to match. Okay, so that is the direction we are going, and you can confirm on the GPS that we're just about pointed in the right direction there. Okay, so without further ado, let's see if we can take off and get over there. And of course, like all helicopters, it's going to go twist to one side. There we go. We'll pull back on the cyclic a little bit here. Now, I got to confess, I've only flown this thing a couple of times, so it might be a little bit wobbly on this. If so, I do apologize. All right, but we are up, up, and away. Next stop, Bandel Airport. All right, now that we're airborne, let me give you a little bit of history on this particular aircraft. Uh, first off, the French name for this is, uh, what is it, Ecure, which I believe is Squirrel. Don't ask me why they named this thing after a squirrel, although it is flying a little squirrely right now. It had its first flight on the 26th of June in 1974, and then it was introduced into service in 1975. It is still in active production today. Now, we most commonly see this helicopter here in the United States as either police helicopter or um, news helicopters. That's the most common usage for them. There are other countries that use them, such as Argentina, Australia, Bolivia, Brazil, Canada, a whole host of countries, really. And, of course, they all have, like, various uses, either military or police force or occasionally, like, a Coast Guard-type thing. All right, let's make sure we're going the right direction here. Yep, looks like we are. Very nice. We should be there momentarily. It's really only about seven miles away from uh, where we took off from. So, yeah, we should be fine with that. Okay, now as far as the stats on the aircraft, uh, this particular helicopter technically has a crew of one, although you can have a second crew member in here. It's got a capacity for five, so a grand total of six people, as we stated earlier. Length of 35 feet, 10 and a half inches. Rotor diameter of 35 feet, 1 inches, so pretty close there. Height of about 10 feet and 3 and a half inches. And as far as the power plant, this thing is powered by one Turbo Mecha Ariel 2B turbo shaft. So that'll give us a max speed of about 155 knots. We're going to cruise roughly around 132 knots, provided, of course, I don't go into the forest there. And we've got a range of about 357 nautical miles. Uh, with full tanks, this thing can fly for about four hours. So. Now you know why news people use it. Uh, they can loiter there and just take all kinds of pictures. We have a, a ceiling of 15,100 feet with this thing. That's as high as we can go. We probably don't want to go much higher because I don't think this thing's pressurized. All right, let's see how far away we are. We are 5 miles, 5.1 miles away, and we're heading roughly in the right direction. We're drifting a little bit. That's only because uh, there's a little bit of breeze. Not too much breeze, but there definitely is a little bit. Um, our airport should be dead ahead, but if you look off to the right, you will notice the green and white flashing light there. The one that's closer is going to be the second airport that we're going to visit. So I'll tell you a little bit more about that one once we get closer to it. But the airport that we're looking for does not have uh, gas facilities, at least not officially, so there won't be any of the green and white flashing beacons there. It'll just be the airport itself. So we'll know it when we get to it, and we're going to get to it soon. Now I'll tell you a little bit about the airports that we're going to here. Uh, the first airport, Bandel, is a privately owned airport. It's owned by Bruce Bandel. Um, it is in Washington County, about three nautical miles southeast of the town of 84. Don't ask me why they named it that. 
And I think we could see it directly ahead there. So yeah, we're, we're at least heading in the right direction. This is going to be fine. I'm going to want to slow down pretty soon as well. So that way I can uh, bring us in. Let's go to an outside view here. Um, yeah, put the camera like that. What I'll try to do is as I make my way in, I will try to do a little bit of some hovering action here for you and show you around the airport uh, from the sky. And then I'll land, we'll get out and kind of walk around the airport and I'll show you. Don't expect a whole host of a lot of stuff with these sceneries. It's just basic, basic stuff. But it's enough to where if you had like say a Piper Cub, like I just got recently, a little freeware Piper Cub, uh, you can actually fly into these airports and have a fun little experience there. So it's stuff to, you know, bring your X-Plane to life. Still haven't decided if I'm going to put it online for you guys to download yet. But if you look close to the upper right corner, you will see our airport. It's just past that forest there. Alright, uh, oh wow, I just noticed something here. It looks like my ADI, what in the hell direction does it say we are going? Oh, you know what, I don't think I caged this thing before I took off. Whoops, okay, well that's what I get for glossing over the last part of the checklist. I can't really take my hands off the controls just yet, so, um, yeah, <laughs> we'll have to wait until I've landed and then I'll fix it there. Just remind me when I get down. Don't ask me how you're going to do that, but you can yell at your computer monitor or something. All right. And by the way, this airport that we are landing at, uh, the elevation is 1,210 feet above sea level. So yeah, it's not much there. There's a little neighborhood, a um, few houses, maybe some barns and one hangar. I've tried to replicate a lot of that stuff that uh, I saw on Google Maps, so you'll see the neighborhood around the area. Now one thing that Bandel is famous for, so to speak, gliders. There are a few people who fly gliders in southwestern PA and this is the little grass strip airport that they use. So I made sure to put a couple of glider models in there as well just so you have a good representation of what this airport is actually used for. Because really it doesn't get too much traffic coming in there. Especially not uh, helicopters such as this. But be that as it may, let's go ahead and bring her down. I want to get into a vortex ring state, so I'm going to like uh, drop the collective but raise the nose up. So we're still going down, but we're just not going down too fast. And whoa, sorry about that pause there for a second. It looks like uh, the lights just came on, all the street lights. It's getting to be that time of the evening here. Okay, now I promised you a little flyby view here, so let's see if we can lose some more forward airspeed, and I will show you the neighborhood this airport is in. If I'm not too mistaken, there's also a trailer park close by. I did not model the trailer park, but I did at least put one trailer, which you can see on the far side of the runway over there by that dirt road. And then there's a main hangar right there. Uh, I can't really see it just yet, but there's a glider in front of the main hangar. And one of the important things that I just wanted to touch on here with uh, these little grass trip airports, the default grass in X-Plane is hideous to drive an aircraft across. You may have seen that if you watched my Oshkosh video earlier this year. When I was in the Pitts biplane driving over the grass, it was horrible. That's what the default grass is like. That's what it'll do to aircraft. So you'll notice that I have like this finely manicured grass underneath the actual runway texture pointing in a different direction. What that'll do is that'll allow you to change the roughness of that texture. So it'll be like a taxiway. It'll be like they mowed the lawn basically so that you can um, get your planes across and over to the runway. It's still a little rough, but it's not so rough that you're going to like bust a strut or something. Alright, but as you can see, we got the farmhouses down there. There's a little barns. There's a couple more houses over by that forest. We've got our helipad right there. Pretty sure the helipad does not exist in real life, but I mean, come on. Most of my flights in X-Plane are helicopter flights. Of course, I'm going to want to have a helipad. And there's another glider. And I'm just taking a look at the windsock here to get an idea what direction 
The wind is blowing. I'm actually going into the wind right now, so really I should be landing like this, but I'm going to turn around and see if I can get us on the helipad. We'll do a little bit of a walkabout here. Doesn't appear to be much wind anyway, so we're good. Alright, but there's our glider, and we got a couple of tail draggers there as well. Low intensity lights around the runway, not much of anything else, just bare bones, as basic as it'll get. One thing that I noticed when I came up with the design of this airport, by default, X-Plane will put runway lights on the side if you tell it that it has runway lights. But if you'll notice on the right side where I've got the manicured grass for the aircraft to park on, by default it did not place runway lights there, which I think is pretty cool. I'm glad that it has that uh, quote-unquote intelligence there. Alright, there's our glider. Uh, oh, that's not a tail dragger. It looks like a Cessna, probably a 140 or something. That's a tail dragger. What is that, a Stinson? Or is that a Piper Cub? I can't even tell from here. Uh, well, we definitely don't want to slam into it, so <laughs> let me swing out to the left here. I don't want to hit it with my tail rotor either. Okay, let's go ahead and bring the bird down, and we'll do a quick walkabout. Whoa! Oh, wow. Not exactly my best landing, but we're down. First order of business, let's go ahead and cage that ADI. I can't believe I took off with that thing. Uh, Alright, so basically you just hold it down until it stops wiggling around, and then you let it go. Now that we've gotten that out of the way, and our instruments are fine, let's go on our promised walkabout. Alright, mind your head when you get out of the helicopter here. Okay, let's make sure everything is all centered here. Should be fine. Yes, absolutely. We should be fine. Alright. And I put the uh, throttle to idle as well, too. Whoa, whoa, I just remembered something here. Um, yeah. I've got the headphones on. I don't think these headphones will allow me to walk all across the place. So, for the sake of immersion, we're going to put the headphones up. There we go. I really didn't have to do that, but come on, you know, realism, yeah. Alright, uh, let's see, so you get a better look at the texture there, yep, definitely looks like grass. And of course, you can determine which direction the texture should face, so that way you get everything all lining up and looking sweet. I do have some aircraft placed in a hangar on the left side of your screen there, the white hangar. The brown hangar on the other side, that uh, can also be set as default parking spot. So if you start in this airport and you want to actually start in the hangar with your aircraft, you can do that on the right hand side. Alright, I'm going to switch modes here. We're in the free look view, so it'll go a heck of a lot faster because I don't want to walk five years around the airport. But you can see we got some planes there, so apparently Bandel's got a whole fleet of aircraft around here. And over here we've got the big huge maintenance hangar, some oil drums, fire extinguisher, and there is one of our gliders. Interesting texture on the glass there, I'm not sure that's supposed to look that way. And there's the hangar itself. So we've got the farmhouses, I'm assuming one of these probably belongs to Mr. Bandel, and then there's the hangar and the barn. Really didn't go to too much trouble to create the area. Just something quick, something easy, something simple. And then there's this trailer on the other side, and the trailer park that I did not choose to depict here. Yeah, pretty simple stuff. All in all, it took me probably about two, maybe at the most three hours to come up with all of this here. And that's just based on what I could see on Google Maps. Whoops, I'll never get in that way. Alright, there we go. Okay, so, now that that's done, we'll go ahead and close our door. And we are going to go to our next and final stop for the evening. So the first thing I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to pop out yield GPS. And we'll go ahead and start working on putting that in. Now the next airport that we're going to be going to is Greg Airport. The code for that is 5 G five that's five golf five and again same basic story it's a little grass strip as a matter of fact if you look it up on Google Maps it really doesn't even exist on Google Maps I don't know if the airport was closed 
Um, I was able to find it on like AirNav and places like that, and they say it's a private airstrip, and obviously it shows up here, otherwise I wouldn't have been able to punch it in. We need to go heading 343. So let's do the uh, changing the HSI thing. And I know I could probably set our CDI to GPS, and that'll get rid of those two flags that say NAV and GS, but I mean, we're really only going to be flying for like five minutes, so it's not even worth it. Alright, so we'll move this over. That's uh, 330. So that should be about 340. Yeah, right about there should be close enough. And we'll move the heading bug because the orange I can see a lot better. So we'll go ahead and just line that up there. Okay, I don't know about you folks, but I am ready to take off and head over there. Now remember, we did put the throttle to idle, so we're going to have to bring that back up. And that is going to be my first assignment. Alright, so throttle up to flight. Wait for the engine to spool up the rotor. And once it looks like we've got decent RPMs, we'll go ahead and go airborne once more. Here's a view from the uh, co-pilot side, and this is what it looks like in the back. Matter of fact, we'll see what other views we have available. That's a center pedestal. Oh, that's an interesting one. That's like the television camera view there. That's looking to the back. Love that heat shimmer, x -plane. Love that heat shimmer. And that's kind of like a cinematic shot there. That's pretty cool. And of course, I had to put the hat on there. I'm sure you've probably noticed it by now. Okay, so there's our outside view. We're going to take off like this, and what I'll do is I'll fly around the airport one more time just to give you another aerial view, and then we'll head over to Greg. Alright, so up, up, and away. Alright, little squirrel is doing its best. I like the pulsating headlights too, that's an interesting touch. Or landing lights. I'm pretty sure if you've seen police choppers like this, they've got different lights on there and a hell of a lot more intensity. Alright, so there's our trailer. There's our hangar. And there's the glider in front of it. I'm going to swing around to the right here. And then I'll probably go back to another outside shot, so that way you can take a good look at the airport, and I can have a Kodak moment. It's probably not going to be our title shot, but there we go. There's the farmhouses again. Everything always looks so much better from the air. I don't know why that is, but eh, it seems to be the case. And of course, the little street lights that are following that road there, that is pretty much um, explained default right there. So you'll notice the cars driving up and down the road from time to time. But yeah, not too shabby. Quick, easy to make. If you happen to have little airstrips over by where you live, I'd highly recommend you pop into WED, take a look at what the airstrip looks like in Google+, and see if you can replicate it. It's relatively easy to do. And don't ask me why, I just suddenly turned, uh, yes, what was that, French or Russian? I don't even know. Alright, but we have just about looked all we can at Bandel, so it's time to head to Greg. So I'm going to go ahead and line us up on our course. And we've got about three miles to go to get to Greg. Like I said, that'll be our last stop for the evening. You can already see it off in the distance because Greg does have uh, facilities for fuel. And I did take creative license with that, so you can see the green and white flashing light up ahead. That'll be the airport that we're going to. Now this one's at a slightly different angle, and one of the unique things that I noticed is the fact that it is lined with trees. Now I did say that I tried to find it on uh, Google Maps, and I really couldn't come up with much, but those trees were there, which gave me the idea that, okay, if this airport no longer exists, when it did exist, they had trees lining either side. So basically I took a lot of creative license with this one. And I'm hoping that you'll enjoy it. Oh, look at that beautiful sunset. Very nice. I always say sunset's my favorite time of day. Alright, so we got the little lake up ahead. And this airport is just outside the town of 84. So on our way in, we're actually going to come 
uh, over the town of 84 before landing. Uh, since the tree line is kind of perpendicular to where we are, I'll probably swing out to the left, turn around, and then come in. A couple of quick facts about this airport. Again, it's a private airport. Um, I believe the owners are H.H. H. Gregg. I want to say that uh, they're in like the lumbering business. I know the town of 84 um, is famous for 84 lumber. The airport elevation itself is approximately 1,200 feet above sea level and the runways run from east to west so you got runway 9 and 27 and of course again grass runways so yeah that's the whole idea behind this episode here now eventually I'll probably take like the Piper Cub or something else through here um, I did run a test just to make sure that I could actually land the Piper Cub there and that the runway wasn't too too rough and it worked out really great but for this particular episode I kinda wanted to get back into the helo action because honestly, the whole reason why I got X-Plane anyway was to fly helicopters. Okay, so we're getting a little closer. We'll put it back to the uh, nifty outside view here. And I think that was where I had it. Alright, so you can start to see the beacon and the runway lights there. So yes, we are definitely just about perpendicular. The town of 84 stretches off to the left of the screen there. So I'm going to bring her down just past the lake and we're going to swing out to the left here, slowly but surely. And once again, I'm trying not to get into a vortex ring state. This thing seems to be pretty forgiving if you're at speed, but obviously the slower you get, the more opportunity you have of going into VRS. That is bad. That is very, very bad, especially if you're below like 100 feet off the deck. Uh, yeah. May as well kiss your butt goodbye. But I think we can handle this one, so should not be a problem. I don't believe our um, barometric pressure has changed any. So let's see if I swing out over this forest here. Altimeter should be good to go. And remember, uh, we are looking at an elevation of about 1,200 even. So as long as I stay over that, I should be good. Right. You can see the town of 84 off to the left there. Judging from what I've seen on Google Maps, that's actually pretty close to accurate. So I am not going to complain about that. Alright, baby. Lose a little bit more airspeed for me here. Let's go base leg. Now, as I explained before, I did take a bit of creative license with this. Since I really couldn't find any good reference pictures for this airport, I decided, let's say... If I won the lottery and had enough money to afford a piece of land that I could turn into this airport, what would I make it look like? And what you're about to see is exactly what I came up with. You've got the road just at the end of the runway, and then there's that other road that goes in. Uh, there's a little dirt path there that goes into the actual airport property. I've got a house there, like an actual ranch house where the owner of the airport would live and then of course all the planes are kind of scattered around the back end there. So let me zoom in a little bit closer here. I'm going to take us down to the deck and I'm going to show off my quote-unquote home airport. Obviously I don't actually live here but yeah I think I might make this my base of operations whenever I'm doing like really light aircraft or helicopters and so on. So I might have to move Octavia Sea King here and uh, the Carinado Cessna, which we still left in Virginia, by the way. So all of that will come later. I don't think we're going to be able to get the F-18 Hornet here, though, so I don't know where we're going to leave that. All right, but there you go. I got a little fence there. Got the dirt road coming in and a little lantern or carriage lights, I think they call them. Got our beacon indicating to close by pilots that, hey, we've got gas if you want to come on down and you know, buy a couple gallons off of me. That'll be all great. Helipad is just beyond that second windsock there. Looks like we got another Cessna parked over to the right of it. Uh, let's go back indoors here and I'll bring us down close to ground effect. And I'm going to do a little bit of showing off here, provided the helicopter will work with me. We'll go sideways here. I love traveling sideways. 
Not sure I'd have the courage to do that in real life, but I'm sure as hell gonna try it here. Alright, so let's swing us around. There's my house, there's my car. Don't ask me what type of car that is. It's uh, something that'll get me from point A to point B. And since this is just a little dinky grass strip, we don't have any huge apron lights. We just have carriage lights all over the place. Get them at like uh, Home Depot or something like that. There's our Cessna. And I got a few more planes here, which could be like the neighbor's planes and stuff like that, or maybe like friends of the family, so on. But yeah, just let your imagination run wild, especially if you don't have uh, any reference material for airports like this. Just, you know, come up with stuff. Use your imagination. Be creative. That's what this is all about. It's all about having fun. I mean, if you're going to be flying in this world, you might as well make it according to your design. So, that's why I came up with this. And of course, you see the nicely manicured grass there. You know why I have that set up that way. Makes it a hell of a lot easier to taxi. Alright, and that's basically all I've got to show you. So, my last uh, trick for the day is going to be to try and land this thing. See if we can hop over the Cessna without dying here. This is going to get fun. Okay, should be able to hop over this Cessna real quick here. Yeah, I think we're at a safe enough altitude that we should be able to pass over without any problems here. Alright, and let's go ahead and bring her down. That way we can call this episode done. Whoa, 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 whoa. I need to push forward here. Alright, I think I got this. I think I got this. Hold on to your butts! Oh! Okay, more practice is needed. But hey, you know what? We are down! And just in time for sunset! It's a beautiful thing. Wonder if dinner is ready yet. I'll have to go in there and find out if Allie's got dinner ready. <laughs> Alright folks, that should just about do it for me, so the last thing I'm going to want to do here is just turn everything off. So, we've got the throttle down to idle already. Alright, we'll flip the switch and that'll turn everything off. And then I'm going to spend some time killing all of these buttons here. Go ahead and turn everything off. So while I'm doing that, I just wanted to thank you all for watching. As always, this is Bell Geode. I've been playing X-Plane version 10.50, and I sincerely hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, feel free to give me a like on this video. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so. And I will be back with another video sometime shortly. I have not forgotten FSX, by the way. Yes, I know that we need a Tom Cattery episode. I'm in the process of getting that done. Also need to put together some Vietnam episodes. It did not help that I had to completely reinstall FSX Steam shortly before the 24-hour uh, charity live stream that was Flight Angels. But I promise you this, I will get back on track. I know I also need to do some more Fallout 4 as well too, so I'll try to get that on the schedule. Alright, but yes, thank you so much for watching. And let me go ahead and uh, take the fuel off, and then we'll engage the rotor brake in a moment here. And I will see you on the next one. So, I hope you all have an excellent evening. And from beautiful Greg Airstrip in southwestern PA. I'm going to tell you all, ciao!